It's that time to give you end of year awards, and I'll do it on today's show of Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining the Locked On Jaguars podcast. I am the host of the Locked On Jaguars Jaguars podcast, Tony Wiggins. And we are your first listen. Thank you for making us your first listen because it's your team every day. We are also free to subscribe to on our YouTube page. Make sure you go to YouTube. That is Locked On Jaguars on the YouTube page and tap in, uh, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell so you receive notifications each and every time. We drop an episode, and then wherever you listen to podcasts at, make sure you tap in that location every single day to make sure you don't miss an episode. I'd also like to shout out all of our everydayers. Thank you for joining us every single day, making yourself an everydayer, and I'd like to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to give some end-of-season awards today. And I know the season is, not over. we got one more game left, and uh, we have playoff implications. When are they in? Uh, I will tell you that Doug Peterson did say today that he didn't go over playoff scenarios. He just told them to win the game and they're in. He told the team, win and they're in. I'm not going to go through all the other stuff with you, with them, because basically win the game and you're in. So, I think it's going to be a tough, tough game. But the end of season awards are not going to be reflected or changed based on what the outcome of that game is. Also, by the way, if you notice, my voice is a little bit different. I'm dealing with some kind of bug that's going around in North Florida. So bear with us. And I do have something in my mouth also to make me not cough. Uh, but we're going to give out the end of year awards today. I know everyone is pointing and looking and concentrating and focusing on whether or not this team is going to make the playoffs. We're going to do the crossover tomorrow with uh, Locked on Titans. And, in fact, that, that might be out very very early or either at midnight. And uh, we'll update you on all of the injuries. We'll have a more definitive uh, answer about Trevor Lawrence, whether or not he'll play. Practice today in the limited capacity. On the sideline, uh, Christian Kirk was also – his 21-day window to come back from injury injury reserve was uh, opened up today. It looks like he might try to give it a go. So the Jaguars will almost be at full strength anyway, with the exception of probably Jamal Agnew uh, so far. Um, they're going to be ready to go. So that's going to take care of itself, but we need to take care of these end-of-year awards. Believe it or not, they've, they've, they've only won one out of their last five, right? But – you might say nobody deserves an award, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, they're nine and seven. So um, they're, they're going to get, you're going to get awards. You get awards if they were seven and nine, if they were four and 12 or whatever, you're going to get awards. So I know looking at this year, it kind of looks like they didn't achieve a lot, especially when you hear the rhetoric and even my shows the last month, it's just because I expected more. But now that we've changed our expectations a little bit, and gotten used to the fact that, well, maybe this team isn't as good as we thought. Well, maybe now we can still acknowledge some good things that happened this year. And I know we want changes in the front office and all of that stuff, but we can still acknowledge exactly what happened on the field this year. And I tell you, it's going to be some surprise names. Not surprises in terms of um, – deserve but but surprises from the standpoint of if i told you at the beginning of the year that this guy's name wouldn't be mentioned when we give these awards out it would have absolutely shocked you right yeah it would have shocked you that we weren't going to give these awards to certain people because come at the beginning of the year we probably would have said uh trevor lawrence either tyson campbell josh allen or maybe Trayvon Walker or Andre Sisco. There was a lot of candidates for defensive player of the year. Trevor Lawrence or Travis Etienne would win offensive player of the year. 
rookie of the year, they probably wouldn't have been looking at a lineman. It probably would have been if you just look at what you who you expected to contribute, it probably would have been Brenton Strange because the tight end position actually had had been a little bit of a sore spot for a number of years. Even though Evan Ingram had a good year last year, it would have been probably newcomer would have been Brenton Strange or Tank Bigsby because it goes with the theme of giving it to people that score touchdowns, right? Unsung Hero probably would have been the same person that, that I'm going to tell you who it's going to be. And that's not necessarily a surprise person. It's just like the guy that just doesn't get enough credit for what he does. And then we're going to hit most improved player. The most improved player. Like, now, like I said, none of this stuff is going to be affected by what's going to happen in, in Nashville this weekend because this is about the previous 17 weeks, including that week. But I fully expect everybody I name to these awards to actually play well on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get right to that. I'm not going to have a prolonged opening here because I don't want to start giving it away because I know who I who I have chosen. and I know most of y'all won't agree. So in segment two, we're going to go with rookie of the year, offensive MVP. Then we'll go with decent, in third segment, defensive MVP, unsung hero, most improved, and then just the player of the year all together, right? The player of the year will come from that little bunch. Uh, yeah, I think that's how we're going to do it today. I think that's the way it needs to be done. And we're going to do that and make sure we get to it here in segment number two in just a second on Locked on Jaguars. All right, I got to let y'all know about the Game Time app, man. If you are like me and you procrastinate when it comes to buying tickets, with me, I do it because I always know I can pick up the phone and get them because of who I am and my relationships, I can always get a ticket to an event, but everybody doesn't have that, right? But what you do have is a relationship with Game Time if you download the app, which you should absolutely do because last minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals is what they specialize in. And they also specialize in you waiting to the last minute and needing somebody to help you get tickets. And that's who Game Time is. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code locked on. $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off your first purchase. Download the game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. All right. Coming back live with you for the end of year awards show here on locked on jaguars let's just get around get down to it i'm going to name the rookie of the year first that would be first round pick anton harrison born in washington dc played at the university of oklahoma got put in at right tackle and has not looked back since has been the most consistent the most available and really the best offensive lineman on this team this year yeah i just gave trip balk a whole bunch of credit because we do that here. We're honest. Uh, Phil Rauscher really wanted him. If you look back and think back to what we were hearing and seeing around the draft, they traded back a couple of times and, and got some late round picks, which I, I thought, it, I don't think it was worth it because nobody wanted those picks later on for them to move around. So they basically just took chances for no reason, but I still give them credit. They got the right dude. When I first saw him in training camp, I thought he was a little light. He's 6'4", he goes over 300 pounds, but he looked like a young kid that's that big, not not one of those older guys. And uh, that's what he is. He's a rookie, but he plays really well. He doesn't shy away from competition. And he's had plenty of all-pro types right in front of him, and he's held his own. T.J. Watt, Nick Bosa, on a weekly basis, yeah, he had some trouble with some of those guys. But for the most part, the young man held his own, and he's done a really, really good job, and he's going to be a fixture on the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line for a number of years to come. Anton Harrison has a bright future. I think his floor is higher than uh, Jawan Taylor, who he replaced, and I think his ceiling is higher than Jawan Taylor. He, he, I hope his ceiling is higher. Jawan Taylor got $80 million to go to Kansas City. Hopefully one day Anton Harrison can get paid and make some money, but he has been very, very good as a, as a young offensive lineman who's going to be on the contract now for another four years. So the Jaguars 
are in real, real good shape with him. That's why I believe investing uh, on that offensive line and making sure you hit it right. And they did pause, but they did get the pick right. How about that? All right. Pardon me for the sniffles. Offensive MVP. It ain't Trevor and it ain't ETN. It's none other than Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram has caught over 100 balls and he's chasing Jimmy Smith's franchise record at this moment. Try, he's only the second guy that ever got 100, yard, 100 receptions in a season. When you talk about guys that have revitalized and re-energized their entire career, Evan Ingram has done about a good, as good a job of reinventing himself as anyone that I've ever seen, especially anyone that came here to Jacksonville. Well, Jimmy Smith back in the day did a hell of a job at that too. But I'm talking about in the last 20 years or so, Evan Ingram has been the best guy to come in here and rehab, if you will. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of something here by comparison. Evan Ingram came in on a one-year deal for about $10 million. You know who came here before on a one-year deal for about $10 million? Dante Moncrief. Yeah. And it's it's not even the same thing in terms of thinking about a guy who has totally reinvented himself and uh, thinking about a guy who has totally just changed the uh, the narrative about who he is. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a first team all pro. And I'm going to say that because of Mark, and because of his performance first, Mark Andrews is injury. Travis Kelsey not playing like the old Travis Kelsey. Dallas Goddard has been hurt. I don't. I can't think of another player, another tight end that has 100 catches that deserves or that has earned the right to be first-team All-Pro. Another critical move in the offseason by the Jaguars. The Jaguars franchise tagged Evan Ingram. They must have knew his value. I, I thought they were crazy to do that, but they did it. They ended up working out an extension with Evan Ingram, and now – he has caught 400 yards. Now, I will say this. I said this on other podcasts, and I'll say it on this podcast. I do still think that he has limitations. I think statistically, um, he only has 38 first downs out of, of with all of those catches. That's the last statistic I saw anyway. And then, to me, there's not enough in the deep middle of the field. There's not. It just seems like it's 100 balls that feels like 50 balls, if, if that makes any sense. So this is one time where the stats don't actually support everything. Like the stats probably outweigh um, the actual performance, in my opinion. That's just me. I know, every, and and I'm not just saying that because I wasn't real high on on franchising him because I I, I admit it that he's the he's the player of the year, and I'm not just saying that because of statistics. One of the things is because he's available. Two is because he eliminated some drops. He had some drops last year, one or two this year, but nothing like what he's had in the past. So, yeah, man, I'm all for giving Evan Ingram the offensive player of the year, and I don't have any trepidation about that. Offensive rookie of the year, like I said, is Anton Harrison. I'm going to get the defensive MVP, Unsung Sung Hero, most improved, and then the best player, uh, the team MVP for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Make sure – what you do is check out Locked On Sports Today, man. Locked On Sports Today is the absolute real deal because Locked On Sports Today is the first ever 24-7 streaming channel. That's right. You heard it. It's the first ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube with all of the local experts from around the Locked On Network plus the national shows. You need to go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel all right here so what i'm going to do is get to those other rewards or awards for the remainder of the season that's right i'm going to do it here in just a second i'm trying my best not to cough and sneeze y'all excuse me but i'll get to that all of that in segment three here on locked on jaguars First, I have to let you know about FanDuel, man. If you haven't made you no money on FanDuel, it is all your fault. But it is something that you can fix because the NFL regular season, while it may be wrapping up, there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Say it again. 
New customers get a $150 bonus and bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same gay parlay, same game parlays. Find bets in the new explore tab. Make a parlay in the parlay hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, running it down, segment three here on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day. And we always thank you for making us your first listen. Let's get right down to it. The defensive MVP is none other than Josh Allen. Another, yet another person that I said if they didn't sign him, they needed to find a trade partner and get the most value for him they can. Good thing for them, they didn't listen and they got maximum production this year. I got a feeling they're going to franchise tag him, though, instead of signing him. And it'll be a head scratcher for me because if there's ever a person you're going to give money to, if you don't pay Josh Allen, then you'll never pay any of your own guys. And they're all about drafting and retaining. So why not pay him this year? Josh Allen right now has 16 and a half sacks. He's like fourth or fifth. He can actually, after that total, he's only a half a sack behind the leaders. Maybe he can win the sack total if he has a good game against Tennessee because they don't have an offensive lineman that's going to be able to stop him. Maybe him and Trayvon Walker as a duo can end the year the way they currently are right now, which is the best duo in the league in terms of sack numbers. So um, Josh Allen has been great this year. He's been everything uh, you, you wanted him to be, everything the contract year says he could be, and he has done a fabulous, fabulous job and he is undoubtedly the defensive MVP for the 2023 season for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The most improved player. Why don't we just camp out right there in that edge rush room? We're going to give it to Trayvon Walker. Nine sacks with a game to go. Maybe he can get in double digits for the league, but that's a heck of a lot of sacks for the other guy to be able to get he's really really come on as of late i think he has like five and a half sacks in like his last six games uh he has really turned it up he plays the run he does everything he almost made the unsung hero but i want to give him most improved uh yeah i'm gonna give him most improved uh with a uh, a little bit of a second place going to Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd improved his play this year. He ain't perfect, but everybody's saying he has to be perfect, right? But Devin Lloyd has improved his play as well to be considered for most improved. But I'm going to give it to Trayvon Walker, the most improved player this season. Unsung hero. For me, this could be a lot of people. At the beginning of the year, I thought this was going to be um, Jamal Agnew. I thought it would be Zay Jones. I thought it would be Dewey Wingard, or I thought it would possibly and probably even be Rayshon Jenkins, right? Because Rayshon's making a lot of big plays and he never, never gets credit for it. I no longer think that. I'm uh, The person that I'm going to give uh, Unsung Hero is a dude that steps up all the time, and literally his statistics show that he steps up all the time, and that's Foy Oluwakan. Foy Sada Oluwakan is the absolute, he epitomizes what an unsung hero is. He just goes to work every day and does his job. And that's all you can ask. He's a tackling machine that runs sideline to sideline. And sometimes I wonder where he gets his energy from. There's not one point I have ever looked on the field and said, Foy Oluwakan, number 23, was at a disadvantage or he caused the Jaguars to not be able to do anything that they wanted to do. So uh, Foy Oluwakan, the... Um, Mike linebacker or off the ball linebacker, whatever you want to call him, number 23 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, in my opinion, is the unsung hero. And in any in any and in any normal year, in any normal year, he could have been the defensive MVP. Probably was last year, to be honest with you. Um, so we've done defensive MVP, unsung hero, most improved. Now we have to do team MVP. The team MVP has to come from this group. 
I'm gonna give you a caveat though. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little curveball in it. I'm, I know who I'm gonna give it to already. If there was somebody who was the team MVP by default that didn't come from this group, it would be Cam Robinson because with Cam and without Cam or Christian Kirk, two of those dudes, man, I'm telling you because it seems like this team plays differently when they have one or both of those guys in the lineup. And they, more importantly, they play real differently when they don't have one of those dudes. But that's all semantics. The team MVP is Josh Allen. Josh Allen is um, he's flirting with first team all to those players than being selected to a Pro Bowl, which is basically a popularity contest. That is not the case when it comes to uh, representing your team as an all pro because that is recognition from the rest of the league and acknowledgement from the rest of the league that you are that guy. So that's where we're going with that, man. Defensive MVP and player of the year for the Jacksonville Jaguars is Josh Allen. Now, I expect everyone I just named to have a huge impact on the game this Sunday. Trevor Lawrence, I think, will play. Travis Etienne, I believe, will play. We need all hands on deck because I heard Mike Vrabel in an interview, and even though we shouldn't have anything to worry about because we're just a better football team, better football teams don't always win the game. That's that's just the truth. They don't. And it's the team that plays the best that day that's going to win. So the Jaguars need to get everybody back, get a singular focus, and go up there and do exactly what it is that they want to do in Nashville, and that is secure a home playoff game, which will be back here the following weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, versus the Cleveland Browns if the Jaguars win that game. Yeah, man, all of those guys really, really have to step up and earn those roles. Now, all of it also depends on whether whether or not Trevor Lawrence is coming back to play. And I think he is. I think Trevor is going to be back to play. So it hasn't been a lost season, okay? We've just we've gone through some peaks and valleys, things that we thought we were done with, but it hasn't been a lost season. That's why I wanted to come out today and show some love and give some awards out to, to guys because, like I said, tomorrow will be the crossover, and then Friday it will be the last things we talk about before the game, before the kickoff, and then, of course, Sunday. We will have a postcast this week because this week so much – is the, is riding and depending on um this game so i think there has to be a quick instant reaction so we didn't have a postcast last week but we will have a postcast on sunday at the conclusion of hopefully the jaguars clinching clinching the afc south for the second consecutive year um i know i've been critical of the organization and i've been critical of some aspects of it and i will continue to do that but right now, it ain't the time for that. Right now is the time to do what they got to do. They got to go beat the Titans and get into the playoffs, man. They got to they gotta do what they got to do. And we need to band together. And, yeah, I had a poll that says, would you rather make the playoffs if you thought that they were going to keep Trent Baalke? Hopefully, they're smart enough to make the playoffs. And if they don't win the Super Bowl, they can still get rid of Trent Baalke because I think there's some things that – and that sounds so crazy. That sounds like – it sounds like something I usually don't like. And that sounds like somebody who's not admitting who wants to, who won't admit when they're wrong. Like if they make it to the Super Bowl, how can you fire your GM? And I go back to other sports where the Lakers, when I was a kid, won the championship and Magic Johnson had the coach fire. And then the guy that replaced him ended up being legendary. And I think about when Michael Jordan, now I'm not a player, but when Michael Jordan had Doug Collins fired and they had gotten into the playoffs. And Michael Jordan got with Phil Jackson and they went on. Sometimes you just have to have a bigger view of what the big picture is and what the blue sky is and realize, thank you for getting to this point, but we can we can go over the hump without you. And I kind of that's kind of the feeling I'm having with Trent Baalke because it's just too much nip and tuck. And it's not even over with. It shouldn't even come down to this, but if the Jaguars don't win and some things happen, they won't even make the playoffs after sitting there at eight and three. That's enough. That's enough. Right there. 
the fact that we are in this position to have this anxiety. Last year was different because nobody expected it. But this year we expected other things. We shouldn't be in the same position. You know why you're in the same position? Because they stuck with the same old team. And I said that yesterday. And that is something I think is unforgivable. And I just don't believe that it's something you can come back from because it just wasted a year for everybody. You never waste my time when you come to the Locked On Jaguars podcast, and I won't waste yours. Even when you're not here, you need to be watching Locked On, Locked On 247 on Locked On Sports Today. That's right. It's the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On Plus our national shows covering every game. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, the crossover edition of Locked On Jaguars Crossover Thursday sponsored by Prize Picks will be tomorrow with Tyler Roller from Tic Tac Titans. We'll get that to you as soon as we can. Until then, you guys make sure you take care of each other and watch this bug that's going around because it's going to beat me up for three or four days right now. But you guys take care. We'll see you next time here on Locked on Jaguar.